Hi, everybody. We're going to get things going. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Richard Hinton. I'm with the George Washington University in Washington, D.C., and I'm the manager of the spatial uh, <laughs> manager of the validation hub. I almost give you my actual job there. Um, so welcome to our training on validation using JOSM. Um, today's format, we'll have a lecture for you. Um, the number of slides that will, that will be made available to you afterwards. And then we'll actually take you into JOSM to show you how the workflow actually works. If you want to follow along as you do so, as, as, as we do so, please do. Now, this training is intended for people who um, know JOSM. So we're not teaching you how to use JOSM, but we're showing you how JOSM can be used as a tool for validation of OSM data. So with me today are three members of the Validation Hub, and I'll let them introduce themselves, introduce themselves with their Noel Dwyer, Natalie O'Dell, and Kate O'Byrne. So with that, I'm going to be quiet and pass it over to uh, the Validation Hub. Hi, I'm Noel Dwyer. I've been a member of the Validation Hub since October of 2020, and I'm a rising senior at the George Washington University. Hi everyone, I'm Natalie O'Dell. Uh, I've been a member of the Validation Hub since June of 2020, so coming up on the one year of that. And uh, I just graduated from the George Washington University this month. Hi, I'm Kate O'Byrne. I'm also just like Natalie coming up on that one year mark and I just graduated from George Washington University as well. I'm gonna get us started with the presentation now. This is OSM Validation with JOSM. So what is validation? Validation is the review of work done by previous mappers for accuracy and completeness. Validating is an important part of OpenStreetMap. It is done by experienced mappers who review the work of others. Validators make sure that OSM standards are met and that data is accurate, complete, and consistent. It is important to ensure that mapping projects are completed and tagged accurately as per the project guidelines. We like to use JOSM because it streamlines geometry and tagging function and has helpful validation plugins to quickly spot errors. Validators also help grow the mapping community. They do so by providing support and positive constructive feedback to new mappers. The goal of a validator is to verify the quality of the data contributed to OSM by users while encouraging them to keep coming back and, and improving their mapping skills. Why is validation so important? It is important to check over the work done by other mappers to assure that all data in a task are complete and correct. OSM is built by volunteers of all skill levels coming from different countries, backgrounds, and experiences. While it is a benefit to have such a variety of mappers, it can also result in inconsistent mapping. Validators help correct these inconsistencies while also helping to build the confidence and skills of mappers. These projects are used for humanitarian purposes and it's important that everything is accurately mapped. Without validation, these maps cannot be used with confidence. As projects and new mappers increase, it only makes validation all that more important. Now we will go through the workflow of validating. So once you have a task selected, where do you begin? Before you do anything, it is important to read all the instructions for your task. From there, you have to make sure you are using the correct imagery and that it's aligned. The JOSM validation tool helps make things easier when it comes to checking over the work and looking for errors. Next step would be to visually scan for completeness or correct any map errors. In this step, you may also want to use any helpful plugins, which can help make, the, make more accurate edits. Once everything looks good and complete, you can then upload the edits. And the final step is to update the task as validated and thank slash provide constructive feedback to the mappers that worked on the task. So like I said before, step one is to always review the instructions. This step is vital to beginning the process of validating. The instructions tell you what imagery you should be using, the types of obje objects you should be mapping, whether that's just roads or roads and buildings. It tells you what type of tags you should be using and to check out any of the linked wikis about the project. Once you have completely read and understood the instructions, you can move on to the next step, aligning the correct imagery. After you read the instructions, you should know which imagery to be using. If the instructions don't state a specific imagery, try each one to see which one best fits what has already been mapped. If the imagery doesn't appear to line up correctly or is slightly off, 
make sure you align the imagery or switch out the imagery to a different source before you continue to validate. Jawsim is a great validation tool. It allows for offline editing of OpenStreetMap. It is similar to the editor within the task manager, but is more powerful and has more features. When you first enter into Jawsim, most validators start off by clicking the blue check mark. This is the validation tool. It will select the feature slash data that you want to validate. It will check all the data and display the errors, categorizing each by error, warnings, and other, depending on how severe the error is. After you click it, it will highlight problem features if there are any. To look at the specific problem features, you can double click on the specific feature and it will highlight it. You can right click and select zoom to problem, or you can use the six key on your keyboard to zoom into the problem to fix it. While some of the errors you will have to fix manually, most of them can be fixed automatically. This can be done by selecting the error or errors and clicking the fix button, automatically fixing them. After you make your own edits, you should once again run the validation tool to double check your work and assure for the highest quality edits. Hi everyone. So um, once you run the validation tool, oftentimes you might come back with a lot of errors showing up in the toolbox or just after a quick visual scan, you realize that a lot of the um, task instructions aren't being followed. For example, maybe most of the buildings aren't mapped um, and it might have been mapped, uh, marked as validated by accident. So kind of what we're gonna do then is decide if you're gonna go ahead and finish the task yourself or send it back to a previous mapper. So we have a nice little flow chart here. Um, this will also be in the presentation uh, on YouTube later. But this is great to refer to when you're going through the validation process. So first you need to ask yourself if there's a lot of problems, um, is this task super urgent? Is it marked as high priority? If it's marked as high priority, you're gonna wanna go ahead and just finish up everything yourself as soon as possible. So this might take a little more time on your end as you're gonna be doing some of the physical mapping at this point. But if it's high priority, that's what we like to do. If it's a medium, or low priority task, then you're going to ask yourself, when was the square last edited? If it was edited less than a month ago, uh, you're going to move to the next part of the flow chart. But if it was over a month ago since that square has been touched, and if just in general the task isn't super active, you're going to want to go ahead and finish that yourself. So if the square is medium low priority, was last edited less than a month ago, you're also going to take a little look at the user that previously worked on that task. You can go to the history tab and right click on their username and get some more information on them. If you find that they really only are like a beginner OSM user, they don't seem to be very active, maybe this was like a one time task they worked on, you're going to want to go ahead and fix that yourself because it's pretty unlikely they will go back if you leave them a message and like take your comments in mind. But if you see that they worked on a lot of projects recently, maybe day of they're working on projects, then you're going to want to um, kind of like ask them to fix the task, especially if there's lots of big mistakes and you're going to want to kind of put some constructive feedback in the chat box, but we'll get more into that in a little bit. Next slide. So um, part of that flowchart process is, like I mentioned, a visual scan. So a visual scan is going to happen regardless of if you're going to go ahead and fix everything or if uh, you're going to be sending it back. Something we like to really focus on is the buildings and the roads. So we've developed like a roads check and a buildings check. So as a part of the buildings check, like I mentioned before, you're going to want to make sure, are there buildings missing? Do things seem to not be aligned? Are the buildings placed in the wrong areas? Are the buildings tagged correctly? Oftentimes we do see um, area, like just a gray box with no tagging where a building should be. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and fix that. Something we like to check for is making sure that existing buildings are squared. You can use the Q shortcut to fix that. Sometimes you might need to rotate a building. For example, it's kind of um, misaligned at the corners. So you can select it, um, hold the S and control shift, and then you'll be able to rotate it based on that one corner. And sometimes we do come across buildings that are like named, which oftentimes is um, going to be a problem because um, with remote mapping, a lot of times things might be just like named building, even though they're like not supposed to be named at all because people don't have that like level of 
baseline knowledge from being out in the field. So you're just gonna to wanna to make sure things are just tagged as like building gas. Then looking, looking into roads, you wanna make sure that the roads are digitized properly. So sometimes they're really misaligned or there's a road where there's really like, it's in the middle of like farmland or something like that. Sometimes it is easier to just like redo that road um, rather than like drag and drop all the nodes node by node. Um, but if you're gonna do any sort of major deletion, you wanna make sure you're taking note of that because just in, oh, just in general, we really try and avoid uh, deleting work from previous mappers. So that's really gonna be more of like a last resort option. Another big thing to check for is making sure the roads are connected to each other. Uh, this is typically a problem that the validation tool might pick up on. Sometimes though you need to visually check for that yourself. Uh, another thing the validation tool will pick out for you is overlapping buildings and roads. Uh, but again, sometimes it doesn't pick up on that. So you just want to visually make sure that that's not happening. And then in general, if you're able to like kind of look into the instructions and figure out what the roads in that region are supposed to be tagged as, you want to make sure that everything's tagged correctly. For example, you want to make sure something that is like tagged as like a, a track is actually tagged as a track, not as a main roadway and stuff like that. So just be like referring back to either the wiki or any like community um, based data at that point. So next slide. So I already mentioned some of these, but these are a lot of the common issues and errors we come up across when we are validating. Um, building not being squared is a big one. There are some scripts you can use to fix this yourself, or else if you just see a few of them, you can select them and press the Q button. I already mentioned the tag is area part, but simple fix for that is just changing the tag to building equals yet. Um, another big error we come across is things being glued together. Um, so this is when a node is attached to another node that is not connected. So a building attached to a building or a building attached to a road. It's really rare that you're actually going to see that. So um, like as like the correct option. So what you're going to want to make sure you do is press G to unglue the nodes and then you can separate the two objects. Another problem we come across is areas overlapping with buildings. Um, sometimes there's you know, this will get picked up by the validation tool but just try and like keep polygons separate from each other if possible. Um, I already mentioned the rows aren't connected to each other, but there are two easy ways to fix that. You can press the A key on your keyboard and click on the end of the road and that'll help allow you to continue drawing it. Or you can highlight the two roads if they are close enough and press the C and it'll automatically combine them. Um, one big error we do come across with the validation tool that we kind of urge people to ignore is it'll say unnamed way because the road doesn't have a name, it's just tagged as like tertiary road or like main road or um, path or track. Um, but we don't have like that real knowledge on what the road is actually supposed to be named. So just ignore that in that case, unless you do have like real world knowledge of the area. Um, and finally, a big thing that we like to look out for is duplicate features. Sometimes, especially in the edges of tasks, um, you do find that there's two like buildings right on top of each other and they're clearly like not supposed to be, they're like someone drew, drew the same building in two different squares. So there's an easy fix to that. You can use the scripting plugin and put in the script, um, like select duplicate building, which we'll get into a little bit later. And that will help you find all these duplicate buildings early on and you'll be able to uh, delete them. So next slide, please. Um, so I already mentioned some of these issues, but one thing I do want to touch on is the Jossum search tool. So searching in Jossum is a really like powerful way for re reviewing data. It's one of the reasons why it's more powerful than ID editor. It allows you to print in some search terms or queries, uh, just like only the features you want. So you can do this by doing edit search or press control F or command F if you're on a Mac on your keyboard, or also there's the magnifying glass window. Um, one use for this in the roads is to type in highway equals the asterisk, name equals asterisk, and that will find all the roads that are incorrectly named. So that'll be roads that are named just road rather than being tagged correctly. So that's an easy fix. It'll select all this for you and then you can go ahead and manually fix that. Next slide, please. 
So another thing we like to look out for when we are doing the visual scan is making sure that things are completely mapped and there's a high degree of spatial accuracy. So you might be asking yourself, what is complete mapping? Well, complete mapping is when all items and features that are mentioned in the instructions, be it waterways, um, land use areas, buildings and roads are mapped and mapped and tagged correctly. So in order to assure that this is be, um, happening, you also wanna make sure that any major errors you come across, even if they're unrelated to the task, that you fix them. So say for example, you're working on a task where they only want you to map buildings, but you do see some main roads in there, but those roads are incorrectly tagged, just go ahead and fix them. Um, even though they're not explicitly mentioned in the instructions, if they're already on the map, you just wanna make sure things are fixed and um, up to date. You also want to keep an eye out for all the minor items that are missing. So that would, might be just like things being tagged incorrectly or um, little buildings like that might be a little hard to see at first, making sure those are actually like added in and um, you're actively fixing them when you're validating. And if you do need to map all the, ta the task, so if you go to that flowchart and you realize it's high priority, um, you're going to be the first, you're going to be the last eyes on that um, in the tasking manager for the most part. So you really want to make sure you're taking extra care to make sure all the missing items are mapped and correctly tagged according to the instructions, because you will be the validator and the mapper at that point. So another thing to keep an eye out for is spatial accuracy that has a lot to do with imagery alignment and just feature alignment. So uh, you just wanna make sure that features are aligned correctly to the imagery, especially if you had to adjust the imagery and just like make sure that everything looks correct. And one thing we really try and uh, avoid doing is not delete features. If you do have to delete something, um, I know like sometimes I come across tasks where it's more of a headache to like individually drag each node and it's easier to just like delete a roadway and then re-add it myself. You wanna really make sure you're mentioning that um, to the mappers who have already worked on the task. They don't think you're just like deleting things without any reason. But in general, like you should just be avoiding doing that if at all possible. Next slide. So getting back to the steps, after you've done your visual scan and everything looks like it's completely mapped and the spatial accuracy is all good to go, uh, you're going to want to either do one of two things. The first thing option is to validate the task. So after you've go at, gone ahead and fixed everything and you've mapped everything, you're going to want to run the validation tool one last time. That'll catch any issues that you may have caused when you're moving things around. Um, and just like anything you might have miss, missed initially, it's always good to run it right before you upload data. Um, so once you do that and you fix all the validation tool errors, you're going to want to type out a change set comment and make sure that you tag the imagery used. And you're going to want to upload that data back to uh, the tasking manager. So as you can see in this little box in the corner, uh, there's an area to put your change set comment there, as well as pick out the imagery you're using. There's also going to be a chat box within the tasking manager, oh, well, a comment box in the tasking manager. And you're going to also want to make sure that you're putting any like comments relevant to other mappers and what you've worked on in there. Um, so once you successfully upload everything, you're going to want to go back to the tasking manager. So next slide, please. So the other option um, is if you figure out that an active project has way too many issues to be fixed, um, you're going to want to end up invalidating the task. So that means don't really start the validation process. Um, you might have already run the validation tool or just done the visual scan and you realize like, okay, according to the flow chart, like I should send this back to the other user, like way too much for me to work on here. So when you go back to the tasking manager, especially if you've made no edits, uh, if you did make like minor edits, make sure you upload them first, obviously, but return to the tasking manager and you're going to want to mark the task status as no, or is this task well mapped, uh, depending on the tasking manager you're using. So this is going to return that task back to needs more mapping and not ready to validate. And you're also going to want to leave some comments there explaining what's left to do and go check out the history tab to see who worked on the task last or just a list of all the mappers who've already worked on it and make sure you're tagging those mappers. That way they know that, um, hey, like they need to come back and fix some things up 
and uh, then you can kind of close that task out and move on to a different task after you've kind of like set them feedback. And hopefully um, they get that memo and they come back, they fix things and it'll be able to be validated later on. All right, so pass it off to Noelle now. Yep, so the sixth and final step is to thank mappers and mark the task as complete. That's if you were to validate it, we're assuming here, if you're marking it as complete, that you've validated it already. So when you're doing this, you should thank all mappers who worked on the square. Um, you can do this by typing the at symbol and then their username. And the purpose of this is to positively reinforce mapping and encourage these mappers to come back and map again and hopefully make even better edits every time that they come back. These messages should be encouraging and any critiques and tips should be constructive to help the mapper learn and again, improve their edits for next time. If there are no issues, uh, messages are still very important to thank these mappers for mapping just so that they continue to come back. And you can see some examples down below. If you have like constructive um, feedback for people, it's nice to put that in the middle in between like, what I like to do is say like, thank you for mapping at these mappers, then give them some feedback and then say, great work, hope to see you map again soon. Just so that you leave like, you start with a good impression and you leave them with a good impression, hopefully making them want to return. And here are some more message examples. Um, so you have the general message at the top, which is just everything in there looked great. They're doing a great job. Just thank them, add their username and keep up the good work. Then if there are small corrections to make, um, these comments can be such as squaring buildings, uh, maybe the task wasn't complete or the features were not tagged appropriately or tagged at all. Those are some other types of things that you can point out to them. So one of the most useful things that we have in Jossum, which really sets it apart from the ID editor and makes it great for validation is these plugins that we have to use. So you can access plugins by going to the preferences tab under the Jossum bar and going to finding plugins, which looks like that little puzzle piece. And then in there, you'll be able to search um, for certain types of plugins. And then you're gonna wanna check the box next to the plugins to add them to your select download list. And you can do these multiple at a time where you search in one, check the box next to it, and then look for others, check the box and download them all at the same time. So some of the ones that we use every single day in our validation, uh, the first one would be the to-do list. This is one of my personal favorites because you can use the Jossum search tool to go and select, let's say every single building in the entire task and then add those to your to-do list and go through individually, look at every single building to make sure that they are aligned correctly, that they are squared and that they appear where they should on the map. And then you know that you're being very thorough and you've seen everything. The next tool is the scripting tool. This has multiple different, um, two different tools within it that we use a lot. One of them is select duplicate building. So if like a building has been mapped where there was already a building there, this honestly, I don't come across this as often as the select non-orthogonal building. Um, that one is super useful and there are most likely unsquared buildings in every single task that I validate. So that one is very useful. It goes through and selects every single building that needs to be squared and then allows you to, I then like to add those to the to-do list so that I can go through and look at each individual building to make sure I'm not accidentally squaring a circular building or something that should not be squared. The next tool is the Mapathoner tool, which is really useful for batch drawing. So if you have multiple features next to each other that are the same, um, the Mapathoner tool is really useful. Like let's say you have a whole entire row of circular buildings. You can just go through and add those in really quickly and it's super efficient. And then the final tool that we have decided to highlight is the mark scene tool. This is also one of my personal favorites as it makes sure that you're being very thorough. It highlights the task parts that you've seen in bright pink so you know exactly what you've seen so far and what you have left to look at. So you can make sure that you're truly looking at every single inch of this task. 
And then here are some resources um, for you to further your validation knowledge and JOSM knowledge as well. We have some from Youth Mappers, some from Missing Maps, and then three recorded webinars uh, for both JOSM and validation that you can refer to as well. All right, so now we're gonna get started with validating and I will do um, a demo of the 1497 task in the hot tasking manager. So Kate, I'll, I can share my screen now. And feel free if you have any questions to interject or type it in the chat um, throughout this demo. All right, so here is today's task. So I have already reviewed the instructions. I'm very familiar with this task, but that is our step one in our workflow. So when you get ready to validate, you will want to read through the instructions, read through this task. Um, I know that it calls for buildings and roads and it um, requires looking at the tagging these roads according to the Highway Tag Africa Wiki. So that would be very important to read through the instructions and check that Highway Tag Africa Wiki to make sure that you are familiar with the different types of roads that you could be tagging in this task. And then also I'm looking here, I'm seeing imagery as any available source. So when I do go ahead and go to this task, uh, I'm gonna go through and kind of like check all the imagery possible to see which one lines up best. So. I've got a task here in the tasking manager. I'm going to resume validation and head on over to my JOSM. Okay, so this is what it'll look like originally. I actually might have to. <laughs> So if you end up with it looking like this, it could have been because you already had a task loaded in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and... Sometimes things happen, okay. So in order to pick the correct imagery, you're gonna find the imagery dropdown and scroll down. I'm gonna try Maxar standard first, see if that works. Um, Okay, so for some reason my OSM data is not showing up. I'm just going to reload it in. And this is a little trick you can use if you end up having your, um, your OSM data not loaded in. You can just switch the editor quickly and then go back to JOSM as I just did. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so now I've got my OSM data loaded in. I have selected an imagery as Maxar standard, and that is showing up right now. So as I can see right now, it doesn't look like it's super lined up. Um, like this road is not where it should be. There's a building here. It doesn't look like there's a building that is there at all. I'm using my right mouse to kind of scroll around and just look to see if this imagery lines up. So I'm not too happy with this imagery and how it lines up. So I'm gonna go ahead and check a different one. Uh, let's try Maxar Premium. Okay, so this looks pretty much the same right now. So that's not gonna do it either. So let me go ahead and switch to Bing. Okay, so this one looks pretty good. All right, so now that I've got my imagery, I'm gonna go to, so here's our little workflow overview. I've read the instructions, I've aligned my imagery. Next, I'm gonna use the JOSM validation tool to kind of just check to see what I need to fix. All right, so the validation tool did not pick up anything, um, which is good. That means that there's nothing, nothing blaring, no obvious issues, no errors, which is good. So I can just go ahead and do my visual check. Um, and 
So while I do that, I'm going to do my visual scan and then I'll also run some helpful plugins as well. So here we are in this task. I'm going to go ahead and just scan this quickly. As you can see down below, here's the mark scene viewer um, in the bottom right. Right now it's showing everything colored in pink because I've seen everything, but I'm just going to go ahead and sweep that away and it's going to start recording what I've seen um, as I move along. So what I'm seeing here is just some roads that, that kind of need to be realigned. Not entirely, but just some that need to be kind of moved on to where they need to go. And then, so looking at this task, I can do this validation myself. There's nothing that needs to be kicked back to the mapper on the hot tasking manager. It's definitely doable for me at this point, and there are no major issues that I need to point out when I go back into comment on the tasking manager, it seems like. So first thing now is I'm gonna run the select duplicate buildings plugin, which will show up here in the top Jossum bar. So none of them are selected, so that, that's good. That means we have no duplicate buildings. Next, I'm going to go ahead and run my non-orthogonal buildings. Also good on that front, no unsquared buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and open my search tool and do a quick search of building equals yes to kind of select every single building in this task. OK, so we've got a few. Now I'm going to add these to my to-do list. And I'm going to use the to-do list to just kind of check to make sure that these buildings are aligned. So here we have one building. It seems to be aligned pretty well, but there does look to be that the building shadow has been mapped. So I'm going to use my X key on my keyboard to move that in so that we have just the building footprint aligned and not the shadow as well. So I can move each individual side of this building until it matches up with the building footprint. And we know that this building is already squared because it didn't show up. So now that I've done that, we can see the shadow is clearly distinguished from the building. And I'm going to say yes, that that building is good. OK, so next one, this building looks like it's almost aligned. I'm just going to drag it a little this way to make sure it's on the building footprint. Looks good to me. Next one. So I'm just going through, kind of just like tightening up the corners of the building. This one looks actually like it has some extra nodes here, uh, which I wouldn't have been able to see if I was zoomed out super far. So it's always good to zoom in as close as possible. So then you can kind of see these nodes are definitely not uh, supposed to be there. So I can go ahead and delete these um, without deleting the entire building. You can just delete individual nodes. And I did, I was able to select them at the same time by holding down shift while I had this one selected and then by selecting the other one. So you can delete uh, those at the same time. And then I just use the escape key to deselect. All right, so now that I am happy with that one, I'll move on to the next building. So this one, I'm gonna use my uh, shift control to rotate it just a tiny bit and then realign using uh, my left mouse and dragging it. And then I'll use the X key on my keyboard to kind of tighten up this side of the building to make sure that the building shadow is not included in the building footprint. And moving on to this last building here. So 
So this one also included a building shadow. So now I've checked over every single building. So now I'm gonna do kind of go back through this task. I'm gonna clear my mark scene and I'm gonna go back through this task, just kind of looking at roads now. So this road here is tagged as a track. I, according to the Highway Tag Africa, that does fit to what this road is doing right now. It is unpaved and it is going through kind of like an agricultural area and does not look like it is accessible by like a four wheeled vehicle. So that matches. And I can also go ahead and with this road, um, just to check, you can open up the history tab to kind of see if it was mapped with local knowledge or if it was mapped with the hot tasking manager. So given these tags here, all of these tags, I can tell that this was mapped with a hot tasking manager. I'm just going through and kind of making sure this road is as aligned as possible. Trying to add kind of as like little nodes as possible. Uh, but since this road is pretty, it has a lot of curvature to it, I am having to add a few nodes. Hopefully no one has any questions yet. <laughs> Actually, Noel, we do we do have a question in the chat okay. from Rabbi. Um, Rabbi, are you able to unmute yourself? Is your connection stable enough to explain your question further? Yes, yeah, sure. Great, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, what I was going to ask was that while while validating, uh, we generate some conflicts, like while simplifying a node, while uh, editing the multi polygons and land uses. Uh, we generate few conflicts, but after resolving those conflicts, more conflicts will be generated. Uh, so how to deal with those conflicts? So conflict resolution while you're working in Jossum? Yeah, in Jossum. So you like, are you talking about using the conflict resolution? No, no. I. Uh, what I mean was that uh, initially uh, we generate few problems, few conflicts, like two, three, and after resolving the conflicts, we generate many conflicts and how to deal with them. So if you're talking about the validation tool, I don't know if somebody else can answer this. I'm thinking conflict resolution, but with the validation tool, um, if you're generating more and more conflicts each time, I would just keep going through and fixing them. This can happen if you're ungluing nodes um, shown by like a paint styles type thing, which wouldn't show up. If two buildings are like glued together, they won't show up as an error before. So if you go in and you unglue, it will definitely add errors into your validation box that you then have to go back through and fix. I'll just say that, uh, yeah, Robbie, I've, uh, if I understand you correctly as well, like when you've had conflicts, that come up in the uh, conflict manager there. Um, once those get resolved, sometimes those result in more conflicts when you try to upload. Is that what you mean? 
yeah, yeah. That... yeah so it's it, it is sort of confusing um and can be sort of um <laughs> annoying uh when that happens because you think you fix all the issues and then you try to upload and then Jocelyn does its own internal um validation of the uh, relations and the topology and it still comes back on our conflicts i don't know if there's a way to sort of fix all of those at once because i think each one is is unique um, from what i've experienced i just sort of have to go through each one and then look at the edits and you know what the conflict um uh, panel is actually saying what it's uh, what is changing in this in this particular instance and then decide okay do i keep the change i made or or do i revert back to the um, original uh, uh, edits that were made, so it's it's a it's kind of a laborious task, a laborious sort of effort that what I've experienced anyway so far. In that I had to you know just go through them one by one and then keep going through this process until no more conflicts are found, and then the data will finally get be able to be pushed up to the OSM editor. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a great question because I like to see more um, information on that myself about conflict resolution when you fix conflicts and that produces more conflicts. Percy, again, maybe because of other relations that um, I didn't catch or weren't obvious uh, the first time around and then now it's sort of causing other issues down the road. But um, unfortunately there's no magic button or tool that will fix things for you automatically that I've come across. So it's kind of a be patient, work through them and do your best judgment on each one. One of the best ways to kind of avoid conflicts happening in general is saving really frequently and not mapping outside of the boundary. So I tend to find more conflicts arise if I've accidentally moved something outside of a boundary um, or deleted something that's attached to something outside of a boundary. So every time that I make an edit such as that, I upload immediately so that I don't have like a cascading conflict. Um, so that's one of like, that's like a preventative type thing, but I don't know the, once you've had one, how to get it from cascading. So uh, this is Dara again. I think the question was answered, Robbie. I see you said thank you in the chat, but if you have any other questions, um, feel free to put those in the chat. Or at this point, if someone has a question that they would like to say aloud, um, that would be fine too, if you'd rather do that. And I did want to reference earlier, we had a question related to imagery and it was answered in the chat. And um, the question was, what if imagery does not match? Uh, and it was answered in the chat by Natalie. I'm somewhat doing this for the record, recording all, but if none of the imagery matches, you might want to try and realign the imagery. And oftentimes, if one of the imagery options, but the imagery ops offset may need to be adjusted. So that's what Natalie said. But I was wondering if you could demonstrate that, Noel, uh, readjusting. Yeah, can, Thank you. I can definitely do that. OK, so um, can I just, so I'm using Bang. So I would go to um, imagery. I would scroll down to imagery offset and then choose my imagery that I'm using right now, which is Bing Aerial Imagery, and I would go to New Offset. So then it's gonna bring up my Offset Manager um, window here. And from there, you just use your left mouse to drag the imagery to align. So if I come upon this task, let's say that this offset right now is set to like zero, zero, this is what the imagery looked like when I tried to go align it, I would just open my imagery offset and I would go and drag that to match um, as closely as possible. And when you're doing this, you wanna, um, you wanna align like as many features as possible. Sometimes they will have been mapped in multiple different offsets. So like the buildings will be aligned to the imagery already, but like roads won't. Just kind of use your own like discretion to figure out if you need to offset it or if you can fix those um, yourself if there are different offsets going on. Usually the most features that are aligned to the same thing you wanna use. So like if most of the features are not aligned, you're gonna to wanna to offset to those features and have like the features that were aligned, you'll just fix those manually. <laughs> 
just to like interject real quickly, something I've come across before is um, like the roadways are super well aligned, but there's like a cluster of buildings in a corner that are misaligned. And it seems like I sometimes I'll like select all of those buildings and then I can like drag them all together. And I feel like oftentimes if like there's a big cluster that's misaligned, like the three were there, like they were all some seem to be off, then you could kind of like select them that way you don't have to like manually just like adjust each building. Um, of course, like that's kind of depends on what you're looking at, but it's nice to like have the option that you can group things together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great way to do that. And you can do that by, um, I don't know, Natalie, what you use. I hold down the shift key and select them if they're like next to a Same. road. Okay. Sometimes I'll like draw a box like to select yeah. it, but if there's like a road in the middle, obviously you can't do that. <laughs> Yeah, like the oh <laughs> well <laughs> that's the lasso right now <laughs> so yeah this is gonna select like some random nodes so in this case that wouldn't work but if they were like off in the middle over here you could draw a box around all of them and it would select them I'll just interject here again. Um, as you can see from the work that uh, the model is doing here, it's when you're validating, you're really getting into the sort of the fine tuning of the data that are already there. And the data that we're here for this particular task, we're pretty good already. Um, just yeah. needed some minor adjustments. So it's validation isn't fun, new, and sexy necessarily, but it's sort of cleaning up what's there and making sure the data that are there are sort of reflecting the reality of the imagery that we have as closely as possible. Um, so it does take some time, some patience, um, but it is absolutely vital because every edit that she's making here is making this sort of a more viable data set that can be used by anybody. I think one improvement Jocelyn could make is that when you're in, it needs to recognize when you're in validation mode. And when you're doing a bunch of stuff like this, maybe play some theme music or something. I think that'd be fun. Especially doing demos. Somebody could do that. But... I'm sure somebody who's smart with scripting can figure that out. Yeah. Or there is a feature too, um, like of Zoom, where someone can share audio while someone else shares their screen. True. I'm pretty sure we have the technology somehow. Somebody knows how to do it, but but yeah. But that's why we we and we sort of picked this task um, uh, sort of in, just to sort of show you how things can be done. But it's not going to take you know a super long time to do. Um, so once Noel is happy with how features are placed here, then she'll show you the rest of the workflow. Because remember, we started in the task manager. We go to Jossum. And then once you validate, we need to go back to Tasking Manager. So she'll close out the loop on so you can see the entire workflow here very shortly. Mm -hmm. So just be patient. I'm gonna folks. just um, okay. So now this is giving me this is a good thing. Now there's a, a warning showing up because I haven't uploaded in a while. I'm gonna just continue the upload and go ahead and check that after. I'm not done yet, but I'm gonna save because I've made a bunch of changes. Um, the things that I've done so far, I'm gonna to add to the beginning of this comment. So I'm gonna say adjusted buildings and roads. And this is that's the imagery that I'm using. I added my comment, and then this is how you push your data back up to um, the hot tasking manager. And you want to do that pretty frequently. Let me just go ahead and stay on the outskirts. Okay. 
So I can see in the mark scene viewer that it looks like I've gone over this entire task. Um, I know I've checked the buildings, I've checked the roads. This road is not aligned out here, but I'm not going to do anything because it is outside of the boundary. So if you see something like that, that you're like, oh, I can see like where it goes, uh, just don't change it because it is outside the task. And so somebody else might be working on it on the other side. Um, and that would create a, a conflict if you were both trying to work on it at the same time. So I've gone through this entire task. I have realigned all the roads. I agree with their tagging and the buildings look good and their footprints look like the imagery. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and upload. And I'm gonna say again, this time I just adjusted roads. Now upload these changes. So then I can go back to the tasking manager. All right, so I'm gonna say, yes, this task is well mapped. I didn't see any major errors while I was validating. So I'm just gonna say, Thank you. I'm going to thank these mappers. And I'll find out who mapped this through the history tab. All right, so it was all done by the same mapper multiple times. So that makes my job easy because I can just type in one. So it's just one person. I don't have any major uh, comments for this person. They did a great job. So I'm just gonna say thank you for mapping this task and keep up the great work. And sign it with youth mappers validation hub, which is not, you won't do this, but we do this. <laughs> so. And submit that task. And that's one more that's validated out of, there's a lot left. So if you're interested in starting to validate, you can definitely work on this task. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen temporarily just to like kind of check in, see if anybody's got any more questions. If there are any questions, uh, folks, please just you can put them in the chat or um, you want to share some experiences you've you've had uh, when it comes to validating or using some of these tools. We'd love to hear them as well. I guess I'll ask how many people here people here have actually like done validation before. Is this like old news to some of you. <laughs> Oh, well, Noelle's validated. I <laughs> have. You. <laughs> you want to Anyone put it in the else? chat. <laughs> you, uh, you could, if you've done some validation or you're sort of new to it and you're learning this way, you're mm -hmm. here, you want to learn more, then um, it's like we hear, we hear from you guys. If you, if you don't want to take your, or you can't take your, uh, your, uh, yourself off mute, then you just put it into the chat window. Maybe if you've done some validation, um, have some time with that. I uh, would be interested to, uh, to find out more. Are there any questions on the sort of steps? Um, or if you've done validation before, do you think there's anything that we're missing? Because one of the things that 
we do with validation, we're always, we're always learning and we're always checking in with the uh, hot crew and with Missy Maps crew and stuff and seeing what they're doing, what new tools they're using and new approaches they're, they're taking to validating the data. Um, so we're all sort of doing the best we can to make the data set as accurate and as useful as possible. Because we're all, you know, we're all learning and uh, we're all trying to make it as, uh, as, uh, as, you know, as useful as, as possible and sharing the knowledge we have. Miss Rabbi mentioned but, uh, in the chat about sharing your favorite plugins. That's an excellent, uh, that's an excellent idea. Uh, you saw some that were in the presentation here, uh, scripting and um, Mapathoner and um, Mapscene, was it? Um, to-do list, but yeah, buildings plugin is an excellent one. Uh, the utils plugin too is a great one. I've been using the Mapathoner a fair bit. Um, not only is it great for tracing, um, but um, but the later versions of it now have a feature that allows you to check for duplicate buildings and for um, and for non-orthogonal buildings and buildings that don't that aren't squared as well. So you can use it through the scripting plugin, or you can use it through the Mapathoner. Other other little works we need. Oh, that better does not work on the new version of Jossum. Oh, okay. Interesting. It's funny, uh, well, my Mapathoner, I'll get a notice that it failed when I sort of boot up, but then I'll go and use it and it will use with, it'll be used without, uh, it'll, it'll work without issues sometimes. So it's kind of strange, kind of strange. So in case folks can't open up the chat right now during the session, I'm just gonna read off some of the responses that Natalie and Kate and the other hub members were saying. So unless you all want to say it aloud, just in case people can't open the chat right now. I know uh, building plugins was mentioned. Does that actually mean building the plugins? Or is it building? There's a, there's a oh, plugin called buildings. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do communications, y'all. I do not do validating. Um, and then Kate, you mentioned that one of your plugin, your favorite plugins is what now? How do I say that? Select non-orthogonal building. <laughs> I kind of butchered it a little bit, um, but it just selects the buildings and squares it off or makes knows which ones aren't squares so you can square it off. Okay, cool, cool. And then, uh, Noelle, yeah, you mentioned that your favorite plugins were to-do list and mark scene and we explained those in the presentation already, right? Yes. Okay. And then I have a question in the chat if we're ready. I had a private question, unless anyone else wants to bring up a topic right now. It looks like there's another question about recruiting a change set as well. Yes, there is. So Let's go ahead and do that one. Um, that, uh, yeah. I was gonna say, I, that's not something I've done myself. There's a uh, plugin to help you do that, um, to revert a change set in Jossum. Um, it's a re uh, reverter, I think it's called. Uh, I haven't used it myself. I don't know if any of the people, any of the ladies on the hub have used it or not, but I haven't used it myself. I'll play with that. So I can't I've never used that. it. But I kind of was curious. So I just searched. There's actually a good link. I can copy it in the paste that shows the step-by-step -step how to do it through Jawsome. So I can just add that for you if you want to know how to do it. Yeah, why don't you throw that, in, yeah, throw that into the, um, the chat. That'd be great. And we can also share that link via email whenever we email all the participants. So has anyone on the call reverted a chain set? I'm gonna take that as a no. <laughs> um, so the question that I had was using the relation tool in Jawsome. So not the question I had, someone sent me, but I think Pippin just shared it. So they're new to doing validation, um, but they've done mapping in Jawsome and they were wondering if someone could show them how to use the relation tool in Jawsum. So could one of you all demo that? Again, that's not something I've actually had a lot of uh, experience with of creating relations. I've done some, um, um, what I call donut, buildings, right? So you have your outer 
um, your outer uh, polygon and your inner polygon. And then those two are related once the inner, once the outer identifying sort of a, a, a building that would have maybe a, a courtyard in the middle. And it's, I've done it two different ways, but you can do one where you have polygon trace on the outside, you trace another way or a polygon on the inside and make that the inner sort of, uh, way and then not the, uh, and identify the larger one as the outer. But as well, you can create a similar um, feature by simply merging sort of four ways together and you sort of put them into a hollow uh, box. Um, so you make a polygon for each side of this sort of one feature, merge them all together and automatically generate that uh, inner, inner polygon. Um, I haven't used the sort of relations tool at all, but I've sort of done it sort of two sort of two different ways a couple of times. But I'm by no means like an expert because again, there are so many tools in Jossum and um, I haven't sort of had a lot of experience with a lot of them um, to, to date. Yes, anyway. Have you guys on the hub, have you guys um, had much, um, have you come across many sort of multi-polygons and polygons with relations and such like that with the work we've done so far? Because I think a lot of the projects we've worked on so far are simple, are sort of more simplified geometries when it comes to the buildings and the roads that are a lot of relations from that standpoint that we've had to actually validate yet. So um, we haven't come across that, I think, a whole lot yet. But correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I haven't come across that yet. But I do, I do know what you're talking about with the buildings and the courtyards, creating that relation without the relation tool through merge. I have done that. I'd laugh at that question because that's something that we as a validation hub should look into and get uh, sort of more familiar with um, because these issues do come up from time to time. We want to make sure we sort of respect the um, relations that are, uh, are in there. Any other questions or comments or suggestions or experiences you want to share? So there's a couple of questions that just came in the chat. The first one is how to create a campaign and a task in hotosm.org. That's something we haven't really gotten into yet. I know we were looking at, um, we youth mappers building out some documentation um, on creating projects, especially for the, um, for the regional ambassadors to work with various um, chapters to make sure they have a robust project lined out. Um, when it comes to an actual campaign, that's a sort of another another step. But building out the projects, we do have a form that we've been working on, like a Google form that can be used to fill out uh, much of the key information needed for a particular project in the task manager. And with that information, then we, uh, you know, that the, it makes it easier for the for the ambassador, uh, uh, youth ambassador, or another member of the steering committee um, to actually create that project with you. Um, but yeah, that's not something that the hub as a, as a cohort has as much as much experience with at this time. Yeah, I've been involved in creating the boundaries for a task, but not actually creating um, the task in the hot tasking manager. And there's another question asking, is there a video that can repetitively be watched to learn more? So do you all have recommendations on a particular tutorial video? Um, the, in our slide presentation, um, there were some resources links there and there's some from HOT that we listed there. Um, and there's not only on Jawson, but also on validation. HOT has hosted a number of webinars and they're, they're quite good. I try to attend them when I can. I always learn something new when I go. Um, and yeah, there you go, Natalie. Natalie just put it into the chat window there. 
Um, so there's lots of sort of resources online. Um, I'm trying to think the, well, just going back to that form there that you posted, that's for the project creation. Is that available on the Ethermapper's website as well, right? Yes, it's available on the validation hub page. And then if you go to resource library and I believe chapter activities, it's also available. Um, I could share screen and show where youth mappers can find that. Would that be helpful, do you think? Yeah, yeah, let's try that. Okay, I'll do that in one second. Sure. If you get the opportunity to get on the um, hot sort of mailing list or Slack channel with a working group and whatnot, they are often hosting webinars and trainings and whatnot. And it'd be great to, it's another great resource to sort of get in to see what's going on. Um, so they sort of set the, the gold standard when it comes to validation and whatnot. They have a lot of good training materials as well. There's actually one this Friday. The, yes, the 28th. Yes. Mm -hmm. The data quality. Discussion yes. yeah, that okay. one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I think that may be more of like a guest speaker discussion about the importance of data quality and not exactly a di direct trading from my understanding right. of it. Yeah, I think you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. Oh, oh, good. Okay. So I will show you all where to find the project creation form and also find some of the documents that everyone's mentioned here. So if you go to projects, this is the main website, youthmappers.org, and you go to validation hub and you'll scroll, scroll down. There's lots of links and resources within all of this text. But if you scroll all the way down, if you kind of want like a shortcut to it, this, these are the resources that the hub members have created. And then you can click tasking manager project creation form and then it opens to the Google form. So this comes currently to Youth Mapper staff and we get a notification and then you'll be contacted uh, about the project creation. So then it will be put on the tasking manager under the Youth Mappers logo. And that's the current process, but we're working on a new process soon that you will learn about um, that will notify you once that's established. And then another way to get to a lot of the resources the videos and things that you all were asking about, you can go here to the additional resources, or you can go to chapters and then a resource library. And once you are at the resource library, if you haven't been to the resource library yet, this is really a great location to find links, other resources to learn more about youth mappers and then um, mapping tools. So if you go to chapter resources, there's trainings, there's Mapathon resources, the validation hub has some more resources here to the videos and things that you all were asking about. And to get to the project creation form, again, it's several places throughout the resource library, but you can go to chapter activities and then there is the project creation form as well. And so I encourage you all to go to the resource library and the validation hub page to find links to those resources. And we will be sharing the presentation that Kate, Noel, and Natalie presented on, and you can find those links within the presentation as well. So we'll email that to you. I think that covered the question. Were there any other questions that I should share screen on the website? Okay, cool. And while I'm here, while I'm at the resource library and the website, does anyone have a specific question of anything they would want to? Okay, we just got a question in the chat. I'll end that, sentence, that statement. What are the procedures to post a blog? Okay, so this is, this is a question directed to me, uh, but I will answer it as well. If you go to the chapter activities where we just were on the resource library, there's a guest blog post, and it's also a Google form where you, where you will submit your blog to, and that will come to me, and I'll work with you to get that posted. Um, so yes, please share your experience on a mapping consecutively for 100 days. Robbie, we would love to have um, your story. Share your story. And congratulations, uh, Robbie, for 100 consecutive days. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Well done.
Uh, there's another question in there on resources in other languages. Specifically, this one's asking about French. Um, it's funny, yeah, you mentioned that or you asked that. Uh, thank you for asking that because that's something we are looking to do, uh, at least getting started, getting a little more work on over the summer is getting some of our documentation in other languages. We have some information in Spanish that came from the uh, chapter in Colombia. Um, part of the issue is, is finding people that can do the translations uh, for us, because obviously we have them in English. We would love to have, well, I know I'd like to have all the validation information, but I'm sure a lot of the other documentation we have on there that have it in multiple languages would be much more beneficial to, to Youth Pepper's uh, network overall. So that is something we're mindful of and we are working towards that. Um, but yes, yeah, Spanish and French are the first two languages that come to my mind about uh, of, of the language we want to get our information into. Um, and then, of course, there are many, many other languages that we'd love to get it trans our documentation translated into as well. Just getting people who know English well enough and the tools and the and OSM platform and the language we're translating into, getting someone with the competency of all those things together and then the time for that person to actually do the translation um, is, uh, is a bit tricky at times. But um, if you know people, who have time or are interested in this, by all means, please reach out to us. Um, uh, I don't care if you have any other suggestions on that. Uh, will they be able to reach out to you, Dara, perhaps, or you can reach out to me? I mean, if you have, yes, if you have things can, you want to do or like to do, I mean, yeah. They can reach out to me and I'll answer Ibrahima's question. Ibrahima actually translated the resource library for youth mappers to use, and Ibrahima we did upload that to the resource library, but I just clicked on the link and it looks like there's a 404 error. Um, so we will figure out what's going on with that. But the resource library is available in Portuguese, Spanish, and French. So basically what happens is the links open up to another website. So the resource itself may not necessarily um, be in the language, but some of the websites may translate. So the resource library, it's Itself with all the explanations of what the resources are, are available in Portuguese, Spanish, and French right now. And there are, um, so whenever this, this, so if you are interested in helping with translations, as Richard said, if you are um, comfortable with the tools, comfortable with English and this, the second language, you can reach out to me at communications at youthmappers.org. I'll put my email in the chat and we can, Get working on that. So we'll go through the priority level of what would need to be translated first and um, to make sure that we have the, the top resources um, in order. But if you have time to do that and you're interested in doing that for the network, we would definitely welcome it. And I'll also add in there that there are several resources already available in other languages. We're working on a YouTube playlist that has various videos. There's French videos out there, there's Spanish videos, there's Portuguese videos um, that I think, Tatia, not to uh, put you on the spot, but I know you're leading a QGIS training soon. Um, and I believe that is, will be in Portuguese. Um, so there's lots of resources out there. If you want to learn, if, you, if English is not your native language and you'd like to learn it in your first language, um, there I would recommend searching on YouTube, searching through the OSM, well, is the, the OSM wiki would have the different languages as well, right? Um, I know there's lots of resources out there on YouTube that would be helpful too. And we're working on getting those out there so that you can use the Youth Mappers platform to support you in that. Does anyone have any questions related to validation or experiences? I'm always curious what your the favorite task you've validated is, or maybe um, the most interesting, uh, I guess, node way that you've changed is. If anyone would like to share the experiences you've had, if there aren't any questions directly related to validation to build your skills. I 
Everyone's pretty quiet. No one wants to share. That's okay. That's all right. I feel like a lot of the tasks kind of like blur together, <laughs> honestly. Uh, so it's hard to like pick out a favorite. I mean, I always some... work with the like power mapping projects we do. Mm. Just I feel like those were always something we knew what we were working towards in a way. So I thought that was pretty cool, you know, that the mapping was going towards something and you knew what the end goal was. So I think that's my favorite. Oh, definitely power mapping is cool. Um, there was one that like I worked on that hadn't been, it hadn't been mapped in years. And so that was definitely interesting because a lot of the data did not match with any imagery at all because it had been so many years. Like I think it'd been four years since anyone had worked on the, on the task. And so it was just kind of like, okay, well, all this data was in there and it was probably accurate when it was put in, but now these things don't exist. So that was interesting. I find it's always more interesting um, when you have some context with the project and you're, you know, you realize sort of why you're doing this and the importance of the project on how it's going to impact, um, you know, impact the, you know, the end users and the agencies and folks will be using it down, downstream. So I find that sort of interesting and sort of gives you a little more, a little more focus and a little more um, perspective um, on, what, on what you're doing. So with that brought up, I just wanted to share with you all the featured mapping projects on Youth Mapper's website to kind of give you a sense like you would learn more about the behind the scenes where the project's going to go once you map. So Kate and Noel brought up the power mapping campaign. So there's a bit of information here. If you click power mapping campaign and the how to guide, there were five different tool, four different tools used in this project. Um, so it was piloted in Sierra Leone and now it's moved from C Sierra Leone. It's in Niger and Nigeria now. And that is in partnership with Arizona State University's Leaps Lab and several other partners such as USAID. And then if you scroll down, there's a map roulette challenge for unmapped settlements. There's food security projects and health um, related projects. So if you want projects that you really get to learn about the exact, the impact of them, I would recommend going to the featured projects uh, page. And I think, Was I sharing screen? Did you all see all of that or was I just talking? You were just talking. <laughs> Great. That's I was <laughs> I was on the website. Let me just share that really quickly then. Okay. So if you go to our main page, you'll go to projects and then you'll go to featured projects. And under the featured projects, you'll see everything I just mentioned here. And then also, if you go to participate in the Let Girls Map page, you'll find projects that are directly related to campaigns that benefit women and girls. So you can scroll through here. Okay. So if there aren't any other questions, I think we will end the session just a little bit early, um, but I want to give an opportunity for any of the hub members, Noel, Natalie, Kate, Richard, if you all have any final statements or any of the participants, if you have any other questions before we sign off and don't, don't sign off yet because we want to take a group photo. Um, but does anyone have any last questions or topics that they'd like to discuss? If uh, for all those that attended, sorry, um, if you guys have any uh, comments, feedback on uh, on the presentation and the topics covered, um, please let us know because we're always, again, looking to learn more and improve more. We want to make sure we convey information um, that's needed. So please, yeah, just let us know if there's anything else you'd like to see um, from us. That's it for me. Richard, so would it be best if they like emailed me? Yeah, yeah that'd be, if you wouldn't mind, yeah. I don't want to flood your inbox, but if you okay. have 
um, yeah, comments and, and suggestions, um, accolades even, but we'll, we'll take those as well. But um, any comments you have, uh, please yeah, send them to Dara at communications at uh, youthmappers.org and uh, she'll get those to us. Thank you. I guess like I have one piece of advice for everyone who's like starting validating for the first time. I feel like, I mean, obviously this session probably might have been overwhelming if this is like your first time, but there's so much like info online and I, I feel like validating has been like really rewarding and making like me better at mapping and getting more comfortable with Jossum just in general. Like I came in with to the hub with not really a lot of experience with validating and now like obviously really comfortable with it. So just like keep pushing through, especially if you come across like problems, there's so many resources online. Excellent point, excellent point, because we're all learning and we learn from each other. And that's why yeah, if, you can, if you can attend a hot webinar or missing maps webinar or something like this, I mean, the more you can do, you always learn something new. Chances are you'll always learn something new. So I see there's another question in the chat window. So do you organize training also? So for us, the trainings that we've offered so far and plan to continue to offer are a JOSM training, and then this will be followed by another validation training. So our plan is to offer each of those every sort of fall and spring. So between September and December, and then between January and May. Um, the idea is that people who wish to increase their sort of knowledge and skill set when it comes to mapping, they want to learn JOSM, then if they become more experienced and wish to get into validation, hopefully they've already learned to have some experience with JOSM because that's the tool we use for validation, obviously. So then preparing, hopefully, the Youth Mappers Network where for more validators and more validation, we want to increase the number of people that are using JOSM and hopefully um, increase the number of people who are validating as well and sort of help give them sort of a helping hand in getting, getting there. But those are the trainings that we're offering so far. We may do more training this summer, another JOSM training perhaps this summer, um, and another validation we'll see. But we have committed to doing them in the fall and the spring each year, doing a JOSM training, then a few weeks later, do a validation training. And those training announcements, so to learn that you can sign up for one of these events, you'll learn about those through social media. We'll if we, it will be on the Youth Mappers chapter calendar as well, which you can find at Bitly, um, Bitly Youth Mappers calendar. I'll put the link in the chat. And you'll also be able to find all of the recordings to all of the previous sessions. The hub, as Richard mentioned, already led a JOSM training before. And we've also had multiple other sessions, including sessions in French, Portuguese, and Spanish. You can find all of those on Youth Mappers YouTube. So I will put that in the chat. And then I just wanted to um, explain, because we had a question about the blog a second ago. I will share my screen real quick and make sure no one has any questions. We're giving you plenty of time if you do have questions. So this is the YouTube. And if you go, Right here are the sessions in multiple languages. And then here are the, all the online sessions, which have been skill building for the majority of the sessions. And if you go to the Youth Mappers website and on the blog, these are all the blogs that we've posted. These are posted once a week. Um, there's also students who have shared about their experiences. Some of them are also about like how Jawsome um, skill building and you can use this toolbar to search if you're looking for a particular topic. But again, you can submit your blog if you go to the resource library and guest blog under the chapter activities. And then I also wanted to share, oh, it just escaped me, ah, the Youth Mappers calendar. So if you go to bit.ly slash Youth Mappers calendar, you'll be able to see specifically the events that are hosted by Youth Mappers chapters, Youth Mappers network, and then also we post uh, additional events that may be beneficial for Youth Mappers to attend that you'd be interested in. So uh, Noel mentioned 
earlier, the validation May, the hot event that's happening. So that is here and you'll be able to find all of the registration information for those events on this calendar. And I see there's a question in the chat. Okay. So someone was just saying that it was a fruitful session. So great job everyone and that they look forward to validating.